Hi everyone and welcome to Thyroid 101, our training on the thyroid. I'm Dr. Robin Burzen, founder and CEO of Parsley Health, and this is one of my favorite things to talk about because we are talking about the gland that is responsible for our metabolism and is the gas pedal for our body's engine. So let's deep dive into the thyroid. Did you know that one in eight women will be diagnosed with a thyroid condition in her lifetime and that most women don't even know that they have a thyroid problem? Also, many men have thyroid impairments as well. But so what is the thyroid? Well, the thyroid is a gland and it's located in the middle of your neck and it kind of looks like a little butterfly. It's part of what we call the endocrine system or our hormone system. And this is a complex system of many hormones, all of which are talking to each other throughout the body. And what is a hormone? Well, it's a chemical messenger that's released from various glands around the body. And these chemical messengers, these hormones, talk to every single one of our cells. So these glands and these hormones are in communication with each other and they act on our cells and they give our cells jobs to do. They give our cells work. The thyroid does not work by itself. The process starts in the brain with the release of a hormone called TRH, which is thyrotropin releasing hormone, and it's released by a gland in the brain called the hypothalamus. TRH is released from the hypothalamus and it goes not too far and it goes to the pituitary gland, and the pituitary gland then releases TSH, which is thyroid stimulating hormone. And TSH goes down and talks to your thyroid. True to its name, TSH has a job to do, and that job is to stimulate the thyroid gland to release two other hormones, T3 and T4. These are your thyroid hormones. The majority of the hormone produced by the thyroid is actually T4. And then T4 travels through the blood to all of your tissues where it is converted to T3. And T3 is the active form of the thyroid. T3 is four times more active compared to T4. So T3 is really the workhorse of the thyroid hormone in the body. It's the hormone that's talking to cells and telling them to do work. Now, these hormones sit on proteins and are bound to proteins, and it's only the hormones, the T3, um, that is off of a protein and what's called free, or free T3, that is out doing work. So one of the most important things to measure in the body is not just the total T4 and total T3 production, but the free T3 production, because this is telling us how much available active hormone you have in your body to do the work of the thyroid gland. Now, sometimes T4 can be converted into something called, oops, reverse T3. And reverse T3 is inactive. And so when you have a cell and you have these little receptors on your cells, you can have reverse T3 lock into the receptor or free T3 rock, lock into a receptor. Free T3 is gonna activate this cell and reverse T3 is gonna do nothing. And the reason your body might make reverse T3, we think of it as kind of like the break on the thyroid. So if the body is highly inflamed, you're dealing with an infection, you're acutely ill, there's this protective mechanism that can slow down your metabolism to allow your body to heal and recover. So our body has all of these breaks and measures and what's so cool is that all of our hormones are interacting and talking to each other and then talking to our cells. Now nutrition is also really important to the thyroid. So there are a couple of nutrients that are key to our body's ability to make these hormones in the first place. Um, two of them are zinc and selenium, others are vitamin D and iron. And so if you don't have zinc and selenium and iron um, and vitamin D, none of these processes of making your T4 and your T3 work very well. Um, you're also sometimes unable to convert T4 to T3, and so you'll have plenty of T4 on board, but then you won't have enough T3. And again, T3 is our most active thyroid hormone, so it's what we care about. All right, so we're gonna do a little review because this is a lot of like bio 101 if some of you went through that in high school or college. We start with the brain, we start with TRH, which is released from the hypothalamus. It talks to the pituitary. The pituitary gland releases TSH, which is thyroid stimulating hormone. TSH goes down and talks to our thyroid, which is this butterfly shaped gland in our neck. We produce mostly T4, and then at the tissue level, meaning out at the body, our T4 is converted to T3, and then this T3 is the active hormone. 
T4 and T3 like to ride around on these proteins called carrier proteins, and these are our proteins here. They're like little school buses for the hormones. And it's only when that free T3 gets off the bus, aka it's free, um, that it can talk to our cells, binding to receptors and turning our cells on, turning on that gas and turning on the metabolism. Now, sometimes, like we said, if you're really sick or you have a big, you're in the ICU, you have an infection, there's a toxin buildup, sometimes the body will convert T4 to reverse T3 instead to slow down your metabolism. And then we talked about our nutrients, right? We need our zinc, our selenium, our iron, our vitamin Ds, even magnesium, and iodine, of course, one I forgot to mention. Um, I'll put it here, we need our iodine. Um, in order to make all of these hormones so that there's enough thyroid hormone on board in the first place. So let's talk about what happens when things go wrong with the thyroid because there's a lot of conditions where it does and back to that one in eight women will be diagnosed with a thyroid condition and that most people with a thyroid condition go undiagnosed. Let's talk about what's going on there. So there's two types of thyroid imbalances that we see, hyperthyroidism and hypothyroidism. Hyperthyroidism is when the thyroid is overactive. We're producing too much of these hormones and as a result, you can experience things like shaking and anxiety, insomnia, weight loss, um, diarrhea. Basically, your metabolism is on overdrive. And when that happens, it's typically due to something called Graves disease, which is an autoimmune disease where we make antibodies called thyroid stimulating antibodies that actually tell the thyroid pump out lots more of this hormone. Now Graves disease and hyperthyroidism or overactive thyroidism are actually pretty rare. The most common thyroid condition that we see is hypothyroidism or low thyroid function. Now in hypo, there can be a couple of causes. The majority of people with hypothyroidism have something called Hashimoto's hypothyroidism, and that is an autoimmune condition, just like Graves' disease, where you have antibodies attacking the thyroid. You can think of them as little soldiers from the immune system who've gotten confused and recognized this gland as an invader and are attacking it. Now over time, what can result when this gland gets attacked and this gland is kind of breaking down is that these hormones don't get produced and you end up with lower and lower levels of thyroid function. Now, not everybody who has low thyroid function has, ha has Hashimoto's or an autoimmune condition. Some people have low thyroid function and low production of these hormones, or they have low thyroid function because they have low conversion of T4 to T3 for a number of other reasons. Those reasons can include nutrient deficiencies, not having enough of our zinc, selenium, iron, iodine, iron, um, and vitamin D and along with other things. It can be due to inflammation, it can be due to food allergies, it can be due to chronic stress. We see all different reasons for people to have low thyroid function without that Hashimoto's antibody component, but we see both. Some of the symptoms of low thyroid function, think of it as the opposite, right, of your hyperthyroidism. You're gonna be constipated, tired, hair falling out, muscle and joint pain, your periods in women can be really variable or stop or start. You can have unexplained weight gain or feel like your metabolism is just like shut down. Um, low appetite, a hoarse voice, brain fog, trouble concentrating, and sensitivity to cold. Now, if you have a couple of these symptoms, these are your clues to talk to your doctor and make sure that you're getting the right testing for your thyroid because those are some of the most common symptoms that we see in, in people across America. So how do you get a better picture of your thyroid function and know if you have a thyroid issue? Well, at Parsley Health, we order a full thyroid panel to look at all of these values on everyone. We have a baseline set of markers that we look at called the Parsley Baseline Panel. It's our panel that our doctors have put together because these are the most important things we need to know we need to look at in most people. Now, we always wanna look at TSH, and that's the hormone that most regular doctors will test for. And they'll say, hey, your TSH looks normal, you're fine. But we know at Parsley Health that that's not good enough, and that only testing TSH will often miss downstream problems down here, which are already showing up before this TSH number starts to get off balance. And we wanna know that. So we run total T4, total T3, free T3 and also free T4 because we want to see how much kind of working T4 you have to convert to T3. We'll calculate uh, reverse T3. We'll look at all of these nutrients and a few more. 
And then we also test for those antibodies, those antithyroglobulin antibodies, um, antithyroid peroxidase antibodies, and also our thyroid stimulating antibodies if we think you might have hyperthyroidism. We look at all of those antibodies and those autoimmune conditions routinely, day one, baseline, because what we find is that we're often able to catch some of these underlying thyroid problems earlier, and as a result, we can even reverse them. Whereas if you wait until this number is so off that it's showing up as abnormal, you're often missing the boat on all of this that's been going on for a long time. So what do you do if you do discover that there's a problem in your thyroid hormones? Well, now you've got to figure out why. Now we absolutely prescribe thyroid medication here at Parsley Health and it can be an important component of the way that we treat thyroid, but not everybody needs it. And oftentimes we can actually reverse or correct thyroid dysfunction by treating the underlying root cause. There's a number of things. I've already talked about nutrient deficiencies. Um, overuse of fluoride in our waters and our toothpaste is not so good for the thyroid. Heavy metal toxicity, eating a lot of seafood and driving up your mercury levels can cause thyroid dysfunction. We also see the thyroid changes in pregnancy and postpartum. And so around pregnancy and childbirth, we're often seeing that um, women have higher thyroid needs and often need thyroid support during pregnancy, even though they're okay otherwise. You could have a chronic infection or a virus, and believe it or not, chronic stress can also impair the thyroid's function. Now, when it comes to the nutrient deficiencies, now you might say, wow, we all eat really well. Why do we have nutrient deficiencies? Well, we eat a lot of refined processed foods that are pretty devoid of important nutrients in this country. And oftentimes, even though we have uh, an over preponderance of calories, we are actually nutrient deficient and we see that all the time. So we test for that too at Parsley Health and we'll recommend the foods that are high in things like zinc and iron and iodine and selenium naturally. And then sometimes supplementation is easier or an important part of treating as well. Now, in addition to supplements and eating the right foods and even taking medication, there are a couple things that you can do around stress that can actually improve thyroid function right on its own. So when it comes to lowering stress, you wanna make sure that you're exercising regularly, that you're exercising and doing things like yoga that are actually bringing down stress and aren't just ramping it up like sometimes cardio can do. Uh, and you also wanna look at other hormones. So we test for things like cortisol at Parsley Health because cortisol can be chronically high and then if cortisol's high all the time, what we see is that thyroid function can go down. Sleep is also the most critical thing. There's a great study that showed that um, shift workers who have really disrupted sleep cycles actually have lower thyroid function. So getting quality sleep is also one of the most important things you can do to optimize your thyroid. All right, that's it for Thyroid 101. I hope you learned a lot in our thyroid basic training and that all of you are ready to be budding doctors and scientists out there. Uh, and if you're wondering if thyroid, if your thyroid is off, definitely talk to your doctor and make sure you get the full thyroid blood panel. And if you can't do that, please come see us at Parsley Health because that's what we do day one. So you can make sure that your metabolism is functioning in full.